But probably after some time, you really realize that this motivation is not correct. The actions are actually not bringing what you were expecting to achieve. Because when you are working for your own benefit in a very selfish way, it go, it, oh, this is a hard one, egos, egos, I won't make it. Somebody else? Yes, egotistically. I'm really daring. <laughs> so, <laughs> when, you, when you work in this way, uh, you don't achieve your own happiness. And you certainly don't serve other people. So it is counterproductive. If you think you can achieve happiness by stepping on other people's head, you're wrong. And just think about that. How many times have you tried to do that in the past and try to remember the result of that? You know? In one sutra, the Buddha said, <clears throat> the, uh, the people that are like uh, children, you know, immature, try to achieve their own happiness regardless of it, other people's uh, feelings. And they do not achieve their happiness, neither that the happiness of other people. Wise people uh, put aside this obsession of being me first, my security, my satisfaction, and try to work for common benefit, global benefit. And in doing so, they serve other people and they achieve as a collateral benefit their own happiness. And he was always using the same old story. And, uh, well, probably you don't know it, so that would be the first time. Anyway, many other times I'll tell you this story. I heard it about like 5,000 times. <laughs> of two persons who decide the same day to plant a tree. So they dig a hole, they prepare the soil, put the water, plant the tree, same action, same work, same tool, let's say. But one is planting the tree in his garden, and the other one is planting the tree in a communal garden. One has the intention to have fruit for himself, for herself, and the other one is planting a tree so that everybody can enjoy fruit when they will be uh, on the tree. And because the motivation is very different, though the actions are the same, the result will be very different. And as the day, the days goes on, go on, then one is getting more and more tense because he's afraid that somebody might break in his garden and steal his fruits. And the other one is more and more relaxed and is just enjoying the growth of the tree and the flowers and the leaves and the fruits and and when comes the time where the fruits are ready, uh, one is afraid that people will take them. And he has created a sort of <clears throat> paranoia in his mind about whoever might pass by, you know, a possible thief. And everybody hates this person. And the other one is just inviting everybody, just pass by and just pick up some fruits and bring it some home, give it to your family and please enjoy it. I'm so happy. So everybody likes this person. And he feels more and more relaxed. He gets fruits for himself. You know, when you have fruit on the tree, you have more than what you need. So he has what he needs. And also he serves all the people and everybody's happy. So the action in the beginning was the same. Digging a hole, planting a tree. The result is completely, radically different because the motivation was different. So... That's where this mind should be the leader and body and speech will follow uh, is so important. <clears throat> Buddhism consider mindfulness as a vital quality. If you don't have mindfulness, your life is just going to follow the stream of your tendencies and habits and so on. There'll be no control whatsoever. You know, There's no pilot in the plane and if we are not mindful we cannot decide so we are not free freedom is about choice right 
you have two options, you can decide. You can decide to take the wrong option, but at least you were free to decide and then you said, I want this. And then when you realize that was not a good choice, then you say, I was wrong and I will change. You know? And this is a, a form of freedom. You know, you're, you're free to make mistakes and free to learn from it and free to change. But when you don't decide, you're not free. When you, you, you're not sitting on the back seat and, and say, anybody can drive. And who is driving in this case? You know, your habits, your emotional reactions are just pushing you here and there. There's no coherency, there's no logic in your actions. And you say, you say things, you do things, and people say, this guy is really crazy. Because there is no mind behind that. There is no uh, mindfulness, there is no attention, there is no reflection, no consideration. It doesn't work. So even if you have a body, healthy body, you can communicate, you can speak. If your mind is vacant, absent, they're not used properly. Now, if you don't have the body <clears throat> and the speech, and you're just, let's say, pure spirit, just the mind, you can't do much. Because uh, this body, this human life, um, is our workshop. It's our working basis. That's With this body, we learn things. Through this body, we uh, can express... Uh, generosity, benevolence, loving-kindness, compassion. Uh, this is through the speech we can also say words that are soothing, helping, or hurting. So, body and speech are extremely important. And they must be supported by the true attitude or genuine motivation. If we want to achieve a state of uh, freedom, what we Buddhists consider as enlightenment, Buddhahood, uh, first one has to tame one's mind. One has to tame one's body. One has to tame one's speech so that they become workable. Uh, we can use them. And then we can decide to give a certain orientation to our mind, a certain objective we want to achieve, and then we're going to act through our body and with our communication in a coherent way. So, these three working together. <clears throat> How are they connected? Body and mind are of a very different nature. Body is impermanent, born, has a certain lifespan, and will die. It's a compounded reality. It's made out of different elements, you know, all the, like all the rest, the tables and the environment, earth, <coughs> water, fire, air. <clears throat> so these elements, they come together. You know, there's the birth process, there's the gestation. Gestation is it? conception, gestation. And so there is a development of a body. Uh, it's pretty much like, uh, you know, I don't know, a cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you bring sugar and flour and eggs and, and then you put it in the oven for nine months and it's growing slowly. Okay. And the mind is, uh, and the body is very limited. You know, I mean, <clears throat> we are limited by time and space. We, we are within time and space frame. We cannot go in the past. I mean, here, we are here. Okay? We cannot go in the past physically. We cannot go in the future physically. Uh, we cannot move or be at several places at the same time. 